so rules for chaos marks and icons, a new unit called Accursed Cultists, and some hints at the changes for the standard Chaos Legionaries. Let's talk about a bunch of heretical leaks and rumours for the new Codex Chaos Space Marines. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today we're talking Chaos, and more specifically going through a few more of the leaks and rumours that have been coming out for the Chaos Codex from playtesters. It does seem to be the way these days that basically every single codex has its rules sort of drip fed out to us, whether it's the people doing the playtesting just deliberately trying not to leak too much, or whether it's Games Workshop themselves giving us hints of the new codex is a bit hard to say, but it seems that the main rumours for the Chaos Codex are coming from one bolter and chainsword threat, from what sounds like someone who's friends with one of the playtesters. It's my instincts that the vast majority of this is going to turn out to be accurate, though obviously at this point it's very unconfirmed. Some details might have been misunderstood at one point along the way, but pretty much most of the previews tally really well with how Games Workshop have been releasing 9th edition codexes and the new models that they've been teasing. Today I thought we'd do another summary of some of the rules teasers that have been coming out from this. I've tried to collect some of the remain reveals into 7 different subjects, which we'll go through one by one. First up, marks and icons seem to be one mechanic that they try and redo every single time they update Chaos. The icons are kind of like the mini standards that you can buy in individual units, though apparently they're going to be a little bit more limited, being only available on Legionaries, Chosen, Possessed, Bikers and Terminators, and no other things like Raptors. They're reportedly going to be points cost upgrades. Vengeance is the more generic one, just giving you a plus one to combat attrition, which seems kind of bad to me. Wrath is the corn one, giving you extra AP in melee. Flame is the Zinch one, which gives you better AP by one when shooting. That one seems like it could be a really interesting one with things like bolters if it's cheap enough. Excess would be the Slanesh one, so plus one to hit in melee. That could be really nice on Possessed or Terminators, again if it's cheap. And Despair is the Nurgle one, sixes to hit auto wound the enemy. Very nice with anything with a big flurry of low strength attacks like Chainswords perhaps. In general for the most part I think these seem better. Maybe the Excess one is a bit of a side grade. Death to the False Emperor on 5 plus is really quite good with the new rules. I think the only one that seems like a miss is the Vengeance one, as it seems that most Chaos units are going to be going to Leadership 9, so morale isn't usually going to be an issue for them. In the current Chaos Marine decks, marks can be given for free, and are usually aimed at most of the non-vehicle choices. It now appears that marks of Chaos come with a Demon Gift attached to them, but they do cost points now. Apparently they're a choice that you can take for characters and core units. I'm going to guess that same as before, certain god-specific legions like the Emperor's Children are only going to be able to take their one dedicated god's mark. I'd imagine that they're going to be at least fairly cheap, maybe just one or two points. The mark of corn gives you plus one strength on the charge, Nurgle gives you minus one to wound, it doesn't say whether or not that's just at melee or whether it's in general, if so then that will be a massive durability boost. Zinch apparently will be ignoring the damage on the first failed save per turn, that's really quite a nice defensive ability and something that's present in quite a lot of armies, as Sonesh would give you the fight's first ability, kind of similar to what the Emperor's Children have now. All of those do seem fairly useful to me, and like before, it sounds like there's still going to be a way to access certain synergies and options. I'm sure that certain stratagems will key off units of the right mark for the right god. The Nurgle minus one to wound one sounds really quite interesting, obviously we'd have to see the full rules on that, whether it's just in melee, or whether that's just a spectacular durability boost to just about everything. Next up, Games Workshop confirmed that Legionaries are the new name for the standard Chaos Marine troops choice. Their max squad size is 10 now, with a leadership of 9, and Games Workshop confirmed that they are indeed 2 wounds and 2 attacks, likely due to Hateful Assault being rolled into their base profile. Perhaps one of the most interesting questions that I had for them was whether or not the various kill team upgrades that you could give them would be rolled into their main datasheet, and at least according to this leak it does sound like it's going to be. The Aspiring Champion apparently will be able to take a Demon Blade, basically a strength user power sword with AP minus 2 and damage of 2, 6 is to wound also causing one mortal wound as well. Seems like quite a nice generalist power weapon, provided it isn't too expensive points wise. Perhaps the single most interesting thing though is that one model can take a Balefire Tome, which will be the little Psyche upgrade for the unit, and if you take that upgrade you can get one cast and one deny with the squad so basically kind of have a mini sorcerer hiding in the ranks. That is going to be a seriously interesting upgrade if it's costed right. I guess it depends on what sort of powers available on the Dark Hereticus discipline. I guess we'll have to see how much they charge for the upgrade, and whether or not it's locked to something like big 10 model squads, which would make it a lot less useful. Finally, that heavy chain axe that you can give a standard legionary gives you plus 4 strength, AP minus 4, 
damage 2 and a minus 1 to hit. So really it's kind of similar to a power fist with AP minus 4. I think it would actually have to be fairly cheap to be worth it at that profile to be honest. As normally it is going to be on a legionary with just the two attacks. I guess certainly doesn't look like it would hurt if you do want to equip them all with chainsword and bolt pistol. And play them very aggressively though. Next up here's just a little bit of a collation of new units and units that have been removed. The new units do tie in quite well with that big rumour dump that we had at the end of last year. Saying that Chaos will be getting multiple new flavours of Chaos Cultists. They'll apparently be getting a Cultist HQ squad, which apparently has 5 models in it. And seems like it basically could be a mini command squad, but for Chaos Cultists rather than Marines. Apparently one of the models will have a mini psych upgrade with one cast and one deny. One will be basically a mini Dark Apostle with one basic prayer. And they'll have a banner in the unit that allows cultists to re-roll hit rolls of one and also boost their leadership. I do wonder whether that could be the one that they teased in that preview trailer for Chaos. Apparently as another new unit entry, there might be some cultist mutants called Accursed Cultists. Again, I feel that's really quite likely to be some of the models that they had briefly show up in that teaser trailer. The big horrible freaky humans that look like they were halfway to becoming Chaos Spawn. According to this, they'll have a mixed unit profile. Big ones with strength 5, toughness 4 and AP minus 2 melee, and little ones with strength 4 and AP minus 1 melee. In any case, another unit choice does sound interesting. Again, it was also rumoured that they might be getting a full box of Chaos Cultists as well, perhaps similar to these ones from Blackstone Fortress. Another fairly persistent rumour is that Games Workshop are going to be redoing the Possessed kit, and interestingly this source basically says that Greater Possessed are going away, and it sounds like they might well be just folded into the standard unit, which I'm guessing, just judging by this, might just be models that are greater possessed in size, with a strength of 5, toughness of 5, and then getting 5 attacks apiece at AP-2 and damage 2. That would certainly be fun, though it would change the character of the unit quite a bit, more like heavy hitting bruisers, as opposed to more normal Chaos Marines with a few additional perks. I wonder if greater possessed will just count as standard models in this new unit, or if they are indeed going away, whether they might just count as a squad sergeant or leader upgrade. On the flip side, according to this source, really quite a lot of units are going to be out of the Chaos Space Marine Codex. Firstly, and kind of surprisingly, Plague Marines, Rubik Marines and Corn Berserkers are all going away. Basically to stop Games Workshop just repeatedly reprinting the same data sheets for them. And you'd still be able to field the units, but using the rules in Codex Death Guard Thousand Sons and the apparently soon to come out World Eaters. According to this, they'd be able to be fielded within your army without breaking any of the detachment rules maybe in a similar sort of way to Harlequins allying with Eldar at the moment. Apparently Noise Marines are the only ones left in the Codex, because apparently Codex Emperor's Children isn't going to be out for really quite a long time still, though apparently their sonic weapons have been improved. Really quite exciting news if World Eaters are happening this year. Would really give a bit more credit to Games Workshop calling this the supposed Year of Chaos. Otherwise, the source says that Mutilators are going away. Again, I do wonder if they're either going to be folded into Obliterators or into the Possessed Squad. Maybe they're an example of a resin kit that they just don't really want to support and feel is a bit redundant perhaps. Still though, that's a bit harder to understand if it does wind up being true. It is kind of rare for Games Workshop to just flat up get rid of units. Apparently Fallen as a unit will be out as well. Again, perhaps that one's a little bit harder to understand. I wonder if they might either release them separately as an expansion type thing, or maybe just have them as one of the rules for the legions that you can field, though it doesn't sound like that there's any news of that yet. And apparently Games Workshop might be getting a bit more restrictive with their data sheets as well, with apparently things like Lords and Sorcerers losing jump pack options, which will be really quite annoying in terms of losing mobility, and also for anyone who's modelled their units that way. I guess that might tally quite well with that Chaos Lord with the jump pack being removed from the Games Workshop web store, though that definitely would be an annoyance to Chaos players, I think. Perhaps the biggest change to Codex Chaos Marines are the Legion traits and their new Doctrine abilities, we did talk about that in previous videos, so I won't labour the point too much today. But apparently for all the legions, they all get 6 warlord traits, 8 relics and stratagems. They're all within the codex for once, without actually having to buy extra supplements, which would be nice. And from this it also does appear that both Red Corsairs and Creations of Bile will be getting support here. Both of which apparently being fleshed out as much as the other legions. Their Doctrine ability, instead of extra AP from Space Marines, is basically a flat damage boost on hit rolls. Exploding sixes to hit with heavy weapons to start with, then the rapid fire and assault weapons, and then pistols and melee weapons. Quite a nice meaningful damage boost with those. The Space Room AP one does tend to be a bit variable depending on whether or not you're fighting armies with very heavy armour or that mainly rely on invul saves. 
In any case, for the actual Legion themselves, it really sounds like they've actually made most of the traits very tempting now. Black Legion actually has a trait that's worthwhile, getting you plus one to hit against the nearest unit or when they're charging. Wordbearers just sound brutal in combat now. Charges and heroic interventions allow you to re-roll hit rolls and they get a five plus save against mortal wounds. Night Lords get better leadership shenanigans and also plus one to advance and charge so they can actually have a bit of a movement boost too. Iron Warriors get some durability against AP minus one and two. Alpha Legion get full back and charge and doing actions as well. The Emperor's Children swap out their fight first for ignoring negative modifiers to hit and sixes to wound boosting their AP by minus one. Red Corsairs get a bonus to objective scoring in addition to their advance and charge. They count as double models for objectives. And Creations of Bile keep their usual Legion traits while also having slain models fight in death. They've all got their unique boosted super doctrines that do some really interesting stuff as well. And apparently the World Eaters are not in the Codex according to this. Again, potentially a very tasty hint of a World Eaters book to come. There's also custom warband traits that you can draw from. One fun one allowing you to kill an enemy unit to get all doctrines active at the same time. And there's a bunch of interesting ones for the various different Chaos Gods if you do dedicate yourself to one particular mark. Moving into some specific unit rumours, first up we have the Terminators. They were getting their three wounds, but also get hit by similar sort of loadout restrictions to things like the Death Guard Terminators, not being able to spam the same combi weapon over every single model, and being kind of limited to what they have in the box. Again, kind of annoying for people who have set up their Terminators that way. Again, it's an expansion of Games Workshop's no model, no rules thing. Another interesting thing is apparently the generic power weapons for Chosen and Terminators will count as accursed weapons now. So basically a generic sort of power weapon profile where they don't make the distinction between models having certain power maces or lightning claws. They all just get one generic decent profile. So a little bit less micromanaging and fiddly assault phases if you do have lots of different weapons within the squad. I think that would have its positives and negatives. At least you could assemble the unit with whichever power weapons you like the look of the best. And I strongly suspect that Power Fists will still give you a bit of extra oomph if you did upgrade to them. To differentiate Chosen, there's an interesting sort of special rule hint, where apparently they have the ability to gain one of the other custom warband special rules. I don't know whether that will be instead of their standard Legion trait or as well as. In any case, depending on what the custom warband traits turn out to be, that sounds like it could give you some really interesting options for building a squad and making them really dedicated to one role. The Lord Discordant sounds like he's getting a bit of a boost, Kind of not really too surprising from Games Workshop's big chunky character models. The Glaive is strength user, AP minus 3 and damage 2, with plus 1 to wound on the charge. Kind of similar to the Virtus Praetor Custodes lances. And the Technovirus Injector thing also gives you plus 1 damage against vehicles. It now apparently has a mouth weapon that gets you a single melter shot. And then as well as the base lord's attack profiles, you get an extra 4 attacks with the Mechadendrites. And 4 attacks with the claws and tail, made at strength 6 and damage 2. Finally, if it does manage to get in touch with vehicles, then it can apparently corrupt them. Really quite an interesting mechanic where you get to roll one dice per wound that the vehicle has remaining. On honor six, they take a mortal wound. That means that if you get to corrupt a really big vehicle, then you could be taking quite a lot of wounds off them, but it's not likely to be something that just outright kills them. Obliterators are getting a fairly expected stat line boost. They've got five wounds now and four attacks in melee. Also gaining leadership nine, which seems to be a fairly common theme throughout the faction. And now their guns get three different profiles, either an anti-infantry one with 9 plus d6 shots at strength 5, AP minus 1, around 5 shots at average at strength 7 and damage 2, or d3 shots at strength 9 and damage 4 if you need to punch through tanks. All of those flesh metal weapons are still only 24 inch range, but at least you get to pick the profile that you'll be shooting at, rather than just wildly firing without knowing quite what your shots are going to be suited to. The Malefic Discipline for the Master of Possession looks interesting, though apparently it is going to be a little bit more limited in scope, only applying to Demonkin units, which in the new book are the Master of Possession, Possessed, Warp Talons and Obliterators. I guess I wouldn't be too surprised if Demon Princes won that list as well. Apparently it's not going to apply to Demon Engines though, so the Master of Possession isn't going to be quite as good for them. Warp Sis might be the go-to there, now giving you a plus one to hit, kind of similar to the Space Marine Tech Marine. In any case, a fair few of the spells look really quite nice. There's a plus one to wound, I presume would be in melee, but if that would affect the obliterator's weapons, that could be seriously scary. One to resurrect a demon kin model. One for a four plus invul save. Probably just applying to the one unit though, as opposed to all of them in an aura, I'd guess. One where you roll against the model's toughness to potentially destroy it in one fell swoop. 
Uh, could be quite good for possessing characters, maybe could be a sniping option perhaps, one for sixes to hit auto wound, and one for plus one strength or toughness, or even both if you rolled high on the test. That seems like it could be pretty good for something like warp talons maybe, getting to toughness five would be really nice. Overall, I do feel that the malefic discipline might be a little bit of a side grade. The re-roll hits and wounds of 1-1 one, one was really quite good, as was the 4 plus inball save aura, though it would appear that more of the discipline is at least kind of useful now. Finally, to wrap up, here are just a few more unit details. The Noxlith Crown looks a bit more interesting, toughness 8 and 14 wounds, and grants a 4 plus inball save against shooting to units within the aura. That sounds potentially really quite powerful, depending on exactly how it's worded. If it is just really quite de-restricted, then that sounds very good indeed. Maybe a sort of shield generator fortification that's actually worth using. Apparently it also gives minus one leadership to enemy units nearby, and priests or psychers can do an action for one command point, presumably instead of their normal prayers or powers. The aspiring champion is now going to be a bit more of a generic lieutenant type choice, with re-rolls of one to wound, rather than the four re-roll wound rolls in the fight phase like he is now. Might make him a bit more generally useful if you want a cop price chaos lord equivalent perhaps. Many demonic units are getting a minus one leadership aura, including things like Possessed, Spawn and the Demon Prince. Abaddon's already ludicrously dangerous at the moment, but it sounds like he's getting even more so, though apparently he's going to be going up massively in points to compensate. Supposedly 300 points now, and 8 attacks base at strength 10, AP minus 4 and damage 3, with a few mortal wounds thrown on top. I'm going to guess that that would be if you're striking with the Talon of Horus, or you can trade out for Drachnian's attacks, which would be 16 at strength 7, AP minus 4 and damage 1. It doesn't sound like you're going to be tying up hordes with him. In addition to that, he gets a massive stack of special rules. It sounds like he basically gets the mark buff of every single one of those demon marks all at once. That would be the Nurgle minus 1 to wound thing, ignoring the first failed save, fights first and plus 1 strength on the charge, and in combination with one of those rules for taking maximum of 3 damage in any one phase, it sounds like as well as being crazily dangerous, he'd also be spectacularly hard to kill, probably even more so than he is now, even if he does lose the half damage thing. Kind of fitting though for perhaps one of the most principal antagonists in all of 40k, having a bigger stat line and a bigger points cost to suit. Finally, it sounds like the Master of Executions might be coming a sort of champion style character, moving to the elite slot, and getting a bunch of the standard champion type special rules, fights first, a 6 inch heroic intervention, and re-rolls versus characters, perhaps a fairly cheap choice who's quite likely to punch above his weight. So overall there's really quite a lot of interesting stuff coming out, obviously it's a little bit speculative at the moment, as we don't really have too much confirmation on the vast majority of this, though it all does seem pretty reasonable for what they do with a Ninth Codex. I'll leave a link to the thread where most of this was coming out down in the description, though it is a little bit scattergun. I would also like to say a special thank you to Gene on the Discord server, who really saved me quite a lot of time with this one, chunking together all of the information in a bit more of a legible way. Massive thanks just for making my life a bit easier. In any case, let me know what you think down in the comments below. Is this the sort of thing that Chaos needs right now? Which of this will be good or bad news for your army? Look forward to hearing what you have to say down in the comments. Finally, if you've enjoyed the video, feel free to subscribe to All Specs Tactics, well, I'll certainly keep the regular 40k stuff coming, with new videos out just about every day. Looking forward to bringing any more news of the Chaos Codex once we have it, and I'll of course review the book in full once we get it. Finally, if you have been enjoying all the videos on the channel, I would just like to mention the Auspex Tactics Patreon page, which is what allows me to keep on making these videos quite so often. If you have been enjoying the videos quite a bit, any support is enormously appreciated. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things happen next on the channel, and entry into the regular prize giveaways with the chance to win some really big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support, then the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.